remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the, at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But that when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. To store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Please be seated. I have learned over the years that people are good. We are inherently and innately good beings. We have built within us a desire to emulate the divine. Evidence for this for me comes from just observing old timers talking with one another. I are one now. <laughs> and we remember the good old days. We do. We do, don't we? <laughs> We remember when we were having a great time. How wonderful it was. What great triumphs we had. What few problems we had. Do you remember those days? They never happened. <laughs> Ruth's going to argue with me, but we can do this later, Ruth. It changed the world, you know. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but you know, we forget. What we forget is the balance of the thing. The good times were good. But we forget all the troubles, struggles, all the troubles, all the pain and all the grief it seems to go away. What we call back is the good things. And I think that's because we're inherently wanting live a good life. Now as we enter this <coughs> season of Lent, this time of ever darkening days, that's the symbolism of it, that lead up to Good Friday and the crucifixion. We're called to a time of repentance and self-sacrifice. Repentance means change. But we don't just change. There's a self-examination that goes with it. We have to look within our being, look within who we are, and see what changes. Who are we? It takes time to think. Who are, where are we in life? And then where is God? And what is the separation? And how do we begin the journey? <laughs> To come closer to God. That's what we do in this season. The first step is to recognize where we're off base. It's that confession thing, you know. Who wants to be negative? But it's not negative. It's seeking out the opportunity to be good, to be better. Identify it. What part of my being right now is not with God. 
What intolerance am I carrying that is not with God? What fear am I carrying that is not with God? Now, fear is a funny thing. We have lots and lots of it. And it gets in the way of our courage. And yet, to act courageously, how many of us here have ever died from that? It's pretty low risk. We can act with courage to overcome those fears. And I know it takes courage. Typically in the past, well, we've talked about Lent and devotion in Lent and, and sacrifice in Lent. I have suggested that we give up something we don't like about ourselves. You know, my, my cousins when I was growing up were all Catholic and they all were, would spend weeks before Lent deciding what they were going to give up. And there'd be a bargaining process with their parents. <laughs> you know, because first of all, you're giving up meat. Everybody's giving up meat. You know, well, that, that's not really much trouble for a kid. <laughs> it's spaghetti every night. That's wonderful. <laughs> no problem. But no, you have to find something personal to give up. That was the rule. And so often they give up candy. Now you understand this is in the 50s, or yeah, in the late 40s, and 50s. We didn't have that much candy. It wasn't a big give up. You were lucky if you got candy once a month. But they'd give it up. And then they'd be proud. They didn't just brag about it. Now, I always wondered what that was about because you know we were shirt tail Methodists. I meant we went to the potlucks. <laughs> so I really didn't understand what this was all about. But it was a big thing in their lives. And it remains. As I talk to them once in a while, I, I discovered that it remains a big thing for them. But I want to suggest something different, rather than giving up candy. <laughs> or some other thing that we can live without anyway. Definitely not dressed up if he's right. Yeah, and we dare suggest that, not in this season. They gotta do something about their calendar, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Selling that right before Lent. But I'm gonna suggest we give up something that we hold very dear and very close to ourselves. Something we're most reluctant to part with. And yet something that scripture calls us to part with. Something that Methodists really have a hard time doing. To the point where almost none would do. But just for the season of Lent, the 40 days, and the Sundays included, give up 10%. Just for that time. That's not much when you consider the whole year. And I know you all went right to money on that, didn't you? Because that's the greatest fear, <laughs> parting with that money. It's hard. But you know, for a short time, we can give it a try. We can give it a try. 10%. And by the way, that's not after tax, unless you're not going to deduct it. But that's not the only 10%. Because this has to be not just a sacrifice. And I know that if we're not at 10% of a tithe right now, it is a sacrifice. But this is about transformation. So I'm going to ask you for another tithe. I'm going to ask you for 10% of your waking time. Be devoted to worship and serving God by serving others. 10%. Now in this busy world when everything is coming at us 20 miles, 20,000 miles an hour and we can't even keep track of what's going on, we've got to be here, we've got to be there, even 10% of my waking hours, where am I going to find that much time? It works out if you sleep 8 hours to 1 hour 36 minutes a day. You spend that much time having a cup of coffee. You spend that much time goofing off, watching television. 
We have the time. We need to divert the energy that we put in things that are of no value anyway. 10% of our time in worship. I mean Sunday worship. That counts. So that reduces your total time, you know, especially if the sermon's long. <laughs> right? Give yourself a test. See how you feel at the end of the, of the Lent season. I'm going to guarantee you, not a money-back guarantee, but I will guarantee you that you're going to feel pretty good. You're going to feel better about your life at the end of that time. The scripture tells us that God will reward us. It doesn't say God's going to open our bank account and fill it. But the reward comes not in the afterlife, but in this life, in living a better life. That becomes the reward of living a life closer to God, in harmony with God, with a new direction. Remember, we have to change what we've been doing to get different results. It seems obvious, but it's amazing how difficult that is to make that first change. You write that first check. You spend that first hour and 36 minutes of your day with God and with God's people serving them. How do you serve people? You know, most of us aren't plugged into a greater charity at the moment, but you know, most of us know somebody who maybe has a little trouble getting their house cleaned up in the spring. Maybe somebody whose yard needs cleaning up. You know, the weeds I've noticed are starting to grow. <coughs> you notice that? We haven't had a lot of rain, but just enough. Help them weed. Tutor a child. You know, somebody who's, whose children could use a little time away from their parents. Because you know how evil we can be as parents to our children. They need somebody outside the family to love them. Spend some time. That counts. An hour and 36 minutes a day. At the end of the Lenten season, I'll bet some of you will figure out a way to spend some more time in serving God. 